A few diehards, hoping to catch the last rays of the setting sun, lie on their blankets amongst the tin can litter and broken glass of Crystal Beach. Mmm, that sun feels good. Oh boy, what a day! <laughs> Tan me, son! Suddenly, from out of the pounding surf, a million minnows in a mad dance formation squirm their way onto the beach and completely cover one of the unsuspecting bathers. Screams of panic are heard as both blanket and bather are pulled into the sea. <coughs> Up on the boardwalk stand two horrified onlookers, Lois Lane and Jimmy Olson, both reporters for Galaxy Communications, who happen to be visiting Crystal Beach to cover a Rotary Club meeting. Call Galaxy, Lois. I I'm going down to help. Hurry! Lois Lane rushes to a nearby phone booth and reaches Clark Kent, anchorman on the evening news, at his office. Clark, it's incredible. A school of minnows at Crystal Beach seems to be going mad. There are millions of them. Jimmy's trying to help. Oh, good heavens! They've got Jimmy! Hurry, Clark! I'm going to call the police! And on the beach, Jimmy's cries are drowned out by an immense flounder on his back as he is carried out to sea. While at WGBS, Clark Kent, now miraculously changed into Superman, opens the window of his office. I don't know what the meaning of this is, but it sounds to me like a job for Superman. And, streaking across the metropolis sky, Superman's X-ray vision spots Jimmy and the hapless sunbather as they're being dragged under the murky surf for what might just be the last time. Meanwhile, on a nearby tidal marsh, bird watcher Bill Talon is taking notes on some very strange bird behavior. <sighs> Those gulls have been circling longer than I've ever seen before. Suddenly, Talon picks up his binoculars. Good heavens! They're all flying upside down. I think I'll call my friend Perry White about this one. Mystified, Talon reports the strange occurrence to his longtime friend, Perry White, editor of the Metropolis Daily Planet. Yes, Bill. Mm -hmm. They're very interesting. Yeah, I'll send Jimmy Olsen out to check on this immediately. Well, Clark? Where's Jimmy Olsen? Clark! Unable to locate Jimmy, Perry stops by the office of Clark Kent, Jimmy's longtime friend and co-worker. Clark, oh, for gosh sakes, they're both gone. Where is that Clark? Oh, biggest story in days. While at Crystal Point, Superman dives down into the sea and pulls the two drowning victims to the boardwalk, where Lois Lane has been anxiously watching the macabre scene taking place on the beach. Oh, Superman, thank goodness you've arrived. How did you know? No time for answers now, Lois. I've got to find out what's causing this strange behavior in our fish population. As he looks out toward the crashing ocean, Superman's X-ray eyes and high-intensity ears detect the high-pitched voices and forms of seven bottlenose dolphins. If anyone can give me the answer to this riddle, I'll get it from the teachers, not the school. Wait here, Lois. Up, up. Then, in a dive that takes the Man of Steel hundreds of feet beneath the fouled waters, Superman swims down, down, faster than an atomic submarine and finally settles in the depths of the murky waters and begins to decipher and learn the unique porpoise language. Yes, I understand. Your aquasphere has recently been polluted by a foul-smelling substance. All the fishes in the Crystal Point area have been overcome uh, by what? Oh, you call it the tidal marsh madness. And because you dolphins breathe air, you have not gone mad. But you're having much trouble. Your eyesight's been affected. Hmm. Acne. Sore throats, huh? All oh, my poor friends. We must do something immediately about these hideously polluting substances in our waters. Far beyond the power of man's sciences, Superman's supervision rapidly breaks down the substances composing the hideous pollutant as he makes a mental note of each chemical substance in its relationship to the horrible whole. Thank you, friends, for the invaluable information you've given me. 
Superman thanks the wise dolphins for their help and in one great jump rises out of the waters of Crystal Point. While at the Daily Planet, Perry is still pondering over the strange story of the upside-down gulls and finally decides to leave a note for Clark Kent just as Superman appears in Clark's office window. Great Scott, Superman. Can't, can't you use the door? You frighten me to death. Oh, I must admit I'm certainly glad you're here. Perry tells Superman Bill the Bird Watcher's strange story. Very interesting. Now, Perry, where's your map of Metropolis? Aha, just as I suspected. Just as Superman suspected, the Bird Sanctuary is located right next to the site of the new experimental biochem industrial complex. Mm-hmm. Birds upside down. Mad minnows. Pardon the pun, Perry, but something's fishy. And it all begins to add up to that new factory next to the tidal marsh. And... At Biochem Industries, the floodgates have just been closed and all evidence of the day's experiments washed out to sea. Metropolis seems very peaceful as Superman races across the moonless sky. I've got to get a look at what's going on at that plant, and I think I can do that best in the guise of Clark Kent. Screeching to a stop on the now deserted beach, Superman returns to his role as Clark Kent and rings the bell of the biochem industrial complex beside the lead-plated bar door. A night watchman answers the bell. Who are you? What do you want? I'm sorry to disturb you, but I've got some transportation difficulties and I'm stranded out here. Could I use your phone? Well, son, I'm sorry, but no one's allowed into this place except those who belong here. What do you mean? Listen, all I want to do is use your phone. What is this place, anyway? What do they do here? This is the Biochem Industrial Laboratories, and what they do here, well, it's top secret, mister, and it's nobody's business but our own. The night watchman slams the door in Clark's face, but not before Superman's X-ray eyes have easily beamed past the watchman and into the lab, where, with his supervision, he can see that the vials contain all the chemicals necessary to manufacture the foul stuff he has just seen in the ocean, and where, with Superman's super nose, he can smell the same hideous odor discernible in the filthy waters at Crystal Point. And at the very same moment, in his enormous mansion overlooking the tidal marsh, Brian Sanders, president of Biochem, is holding a meeting of the board of directors of the corporation. Brian pounds his gavel on the table to call the meeting to order. We have, we have only one thing for discussion tonight, and that's our experiment. We must press ahead quickly. If we work fast enough, we'll easily outmaneuver our competitors, and very soon Biochem will control the whole chemical market completely. But, Brian, to continue in this matter is to risk our environment, and I, for one, will not That's be... enough, Dr. Main. But... You're fired. But... Suddenly... Superman! Just as I thought, it's you, Brian Sanders. You have put yourself above all that we value and cherish in Metropolis. You're as ugly and useless as the aluminum cans that litter the shore of Crystal Beach and too many other beaches of the world. No, Superman! This is certainly going to be a, a temporary situation. Please believe me. I must gain control of the market. If I do, maybe people will respect me as they respect you. Oh, please, Superman. I, I must be allowed to continue my experiment. Respect? Have you ever heard of the tidal marsh madness, Sanders? Have you ever seen an innocent bather swept into the sea by millions of mad, mindless minnows? Have you ever noticed the murky waters at what used to be called Crystal Clear Beach? Sanders begins to weep. <laughs> what have I done? I would never dream of doing anything to make you angry, Superman. I've searched for power only so you and others would look up to me. What can I do now, Superman? Is there anything I can do to make amends? Simply understand that to be number one at the expense of all other living creatures is to be zero. Zero.